Hi, this is a review and disassembly of the Dell Precision M6500 mobile workstation. I bought this machine in 2010 and used it as my main PC for 5 years. Afterwards, it remained my personal laptop until a few weeks ago when I got a Razer Blade 17, which I will talk about in another video. The M6500 is extremely well built with a thick anodized aluminum shell and a magnesium alloy roll cage. I dropped it once and uh, there is only a small thing on the display lid. A slight insufficiency is the keyboard deck which is made of plastic. The M6600 that uh, succeeded it would introduce metal palm rests though that model came with a 17.3 inch 16 by 9 display with lower resolution and uh, is much bulkier. That however is not to say that uh, the M6500 is not bulky. Any way you put it, it is a big and heavy machine. Next to the Blade 17, it is almost twice as thick and uh, quite a bit heavier. Still for 2010, this was how you could get a well-built 17-inch machine that was not a Mac, and uh, it almost certainly was more durable than the MacBook Pro 17 with its weak hinge design. Spec-wise, this specific example came equipped with a first-generation Intel Core i7-720QM CPU and NVIDIA Quadro FX2800M GPU. The quad-core CPU with 8 threads was the first in laptops and it felt genuinely fast in 2010, even though this was only a mid-range chip with i7-820QM and i7-920XM Extreme Edition CPUs as its bigger brothers. The Quadro FX2800M GPU was one step above the cheapest option, which was an AMD ATI Fire Pro M7740. In reality, however, it was the slowest. Some suggest that the AMD card was faster than even the uh, 3800M. These all had only 1 GB of uh, VRAM. The big boss was the Quadro FX 5000M that was introduced later in the model run. This unit came with 4GB of DDR3-1333 memory in dual-channel mode, though the quad-core CPU means that there are four slots. The 920XM CPU would also support DDR3-1600. I upgraded to 8GB in 2013. It also came with a 320GB hard drive to which I added a 1TB Samsung A50 Pro in 2015. The SSD made it much faster and more usable. In terms of display, this is a WUXGA WLED panel. Today this resolution is usually referred to as Full HD+. At the time, Dell also offered RGB LED panels with richer color gamut. Although none can be considered good by today's standard, I think all panels are TM and this one clearly uses PWM too. When it comes to connectivity, this was as good as they came in 2010. It has USB 3.0, eSATA, SD card reader, IEEE 1394, PCMCIA, Express card, Gigabit Ethernet, VGA, DisplayPort, and Dell's proprietary docking port. What is interesting is the touchpad. It has hidden buttons and a dial that could be actuated by touching a special symbol at the lower left corner. They are somewhat like what ASUS is offering today with their media dial. The driver would also make it possible to scroll infinitely, so instead of lifting your fingers again and again, you just start to scroll and continue by drawing circles on and on. Unfortunately, this driver doesn't behave under Windows 10 and uh, will cause the touchpad to become inoperable randomly. As you would expect, the laptop has ambient light sensors and a 2 megapixel webcam. Unfortunately, it could only do 480p video. Naturally, the M6500 is very serviceable. 
the battery pops out easily with the push of the lock. Underneath, we see a SIM card slot for the WWAN that uh, this unit was not equipped with, as well as the first drive bay. There is a Philips 1 screw that would allow us to pop out also the optical drive and possibly replace it with another hard drive. Two other Philips 1 screws hold the back cover. After removing this cover, we gain access to the first two memory slots. The second drive bay and slots of a range of add-ons including WWAN, UWB, which is, I understand, uh, some, some type of wireless USB, and I believe the first SSDs offered in the industry. On the top side, we can easily take off the speaker grill and gain access to the speakers, which disintegrated when I touched them last year and I repaired them with a bit of RTV. There are four Philips 1 screws that hold the keyboard down. After removing the keyboard, we gain access to two further RAM slots. We can also see that, like with many Dells, this motherboard is inverted. Overall, the Dell Precision M6500 was a very well-built powerhouse, as Intel made a few giant leaps in the years immediately persuading to its introduction, and as SSDs quickly became the standard, it felt noticeably slow in short order. Still, it came with features and build quality that is not to be found in today's laptops, and I plan on using it for OBD2 diagnostics, for which it remains adequate.